I started off as a printmaker and trained traditionally in liner cut and screen print. I've come from a 2D flat world into a completely different dimension. I was interested in microscopy and I'm interested in the way microscopy has influenced popular culture, the idea of looking at invisible structures and going down into these you know, unknown realms. I was trying to print or produce works that were larger than the actual object. Someone had given me their entire collection of plastic yaois. I spent my time flatbed scanning these plastic animals and playing with them in Photoshop, printing them on 50 reams of paper and sticking an entire A4 copy pack together so I'd get these enormous pictures. That's what I brought to Applied Maths to Tim Sendon. I actually showed him these massive printouts that I've done of these plastic objects. I work in a very interesting department, the Department of Applied Mathematics at the ANU. It's a collection of physicists and chemists and mathematicians and we're all scientists that like to work across boundaries. One of my uh, roles in this, this group, this very uh, eclectic group, is as a surface chemist and so I'm interested in interfaces and how chemical interfaces can be uh, studied. We have tools, often computational or experimental tools, forms of microscopy that we like to uh, lend to other areas and other disciplines. At the microscopic world, we're using X-ray tomography, micro X-ray tomography, and that helps us to define the three-dimensional structure of opaque objects. So we might, for example, look at how blood clots are situated within tissue. We might look at how a wood structure is affected by uh, wood preservatives. All right, it's ready. OK. <laughs> When I first came here, I felt incredibly shy and incredibly nervous and I was really determined to show that I was self-sufficient with the technology and, and that I could actually, you know, produce something. When I brought my plastic animals into the department, Tim Sendon understood exactly what I was getting at, that every object is interesting. The idea that you can see an object from the inside and out is, you know, a fantastic way of viewing the world. The program Drishti that I was using to visualise the data with was incredibly new and it was a huge learning curve, like I'd never used three-dimensional data before. It wasn't set up like Photoshop or any of those kind of user-friendly programs. I had to actually translate it through a sort of graph rather than through an instant object. I made most of Nanoplastica at night on my own here in the labs. It took from 2006 to 2008 to make this work. Because they're blown out of proportion, you don't know if they are infusoria or nanobugs or some kind of bacteria, you don't realise at first that they are plastic animals and that you're looking inside a miniature toy. The colouring that I used was really to reference sort of 1950s sci-fi schlock horror movies, the idea of the organism becoming larger than the human scale. For us it was uh, initially cute to see plastic objects to Im image. There was a trivial side that we thought was what the artist was trying to do, but no, in fact, we could see that this plastic object was animated and had its own life force. Clearly, the tension was that it, it didn't. It came from a completely artificial source. Because of the success of the show, Canberra Museum and Gallery purchased the work as part of their permanent collection. researchers are fantastic, like, you know, I ask them information all the time and they, they correct me if I say something that's incorrect, so they were checking my blog to make sure that the kind of science writing that I was doing was correct, checking my facts, my spelling. <laughs> so it won't actually be soil, but something else. I mean, it should have a water saturation, some air spaces and grains. I mean, we want to see the root push through the grains. My project started off a couple of years ago capturing static objects. And then, because the technology has progressed, 
the team in Applied Maths are actually looking at dynamic systems and what they're trying to capture is movement. Because I am interested in the way we perceive nature as being either artificial or natural, I thought that perhaps a dynamic system I could relate to was propagating seeds and what would a seed look like if it was actually captured sprouting. Really, as, a, as an artist, she's gone from 2D to 3D and now 4D. It's particularly in the fourth dimensional work that she's doing, she's actually fueling the science. And so her passion and her ability to, to work in the fourth dimension is actually giving new ideas and really motivating the science. Since I got the Synapse grant, I've been uh, given an Australia Council residency in London next year. And also to keep the project going was suggested that I apply for a PhD scholarship, which I was successful in getting. And she will do it jointly with uh, the School of Art and our department, which means that she'll be at least with us for another four years. I'll never be a scientist. I will be a doctor of philosophy in visual arts. I think I'm much more of a cultural commentator and a visual artist than a scientist. I think you have to know a fair bit more to be a scientist. See, see this through here? That's actually an air gap through there. That's why it's coming up so well. You have to have that inspiration to go beyond the rules and really think outside the box. Erica was something the group really had to do to become a bit more introspective and ultimately a bit more creative.